So I did this job. I did all of the drywall in this job. There's quite a bit here. I have control joints and everything throughout here. Um, there was quite a bit of patching. But after I'm all everything said and done, um, there's usually a lot more said than done. And this needed to be patched and nobody said a word. Now, they said we hung the drywall here and cut this out, but this is not new drywall, it's old drywall. And apparently it had to be patched, but nobody said anything. But that's really not the reason why I'm recording this. This is five minute mud. I'm gonna finish this in one, one shot today. I did catch that, by the way, in my pan, that little piece of mud that fell. It went right down in my pan. But that's not why I'm, I'm here recording this. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show you why in a second, because I'm, a, I'm an expert on a, on a Facebook page called um, Drywall Mentors. And this guy named Mudman Dan has got this thing set up where he takes his, his heat gun and he straps it to one of these poles here and he points it up at where it is to go and he turns it on. Literally dry out that patch. And I thought, what a great idea. That is genius. So this will dry out the patch now very quickly. It's gonna, it's gonna set it up very quickly. And, and I'll be able to finish this in a fraction of the time had I just used five. Normally this, this job is a lot closer to my house, so I don't really need to do this. I can, I can hit this a couple of times with five, skim it with topping, walk away, come back tomorrow. I'm not really gonna save any time, but if this was far away, this is what I would wanna do. That exactly. So, so this is gonna be, this is gonna be awesome. Mudman Dan on the Drywall Mentors on Facebook. God, I, I'm giving you a big thumbs up here. Sorry, it looks like my mic's lost their juice, but I wanna just show you what I've done in here. So if you can see, I've done this whole ceiling here. I put a control joint here, across here, because that's a long way from that wall to that wall. And it would crack somewhere in the ceiling. I'm doing this patch right here like I showed you with my uh, heat gun on that pole. And then I had to do a whole bunch of patches and repairs. This wall got all patched and repaired. There was a steel beam in here where they put a beam across here so they could give it an open concept. So um, I've got patches here in the laundry room. We did that, did this wall here, the patches here, ceiling. This is all mud, if I can back it up some. Hopefully you can see this. And then I had a whole bunch of those circular cans. One there, that was actually a crack, it was water damage. I had one here, one here. They changed out the light cans to be different. I had some patching in the basement, some patching in here. And this ceiling, see the ceiling in here? It was all bowing down. It, the whole thing was bowing down because they, back in the, mid 70s they didn't um, they used half inch drywall this is all 16 on center but what they did and this house was probably built in the mid to late 70s maybe even early 80s but by the by the early 80s though we realized this didn't work and screws came out and they told us that you needed one screw and the glue so we glued it and I'm sorry, the glue came out. Not the screws yet, but the glue came out. And they told us we didn't have to nail everything off. Otherwise, everything was set with th three sets of two nails. So the perimeter was done, 
and you had two nails, two nails, two nails in the field. So six nails in the field plus the perimeter. So that's eight nails coming across every joist. And then what happened was the glue came out and they said, we only needed one nail in the field, just one. And all, every house that they did that with half inch drywall and the glue failed, started to bow. All of the ceilings started to bow. And so that's what was happening here. And a lot of people, they come in and they just coat in the seam because you can see the seams really well, but that's not the problem. The problem is in between the seams, it's all bowing down. So you screw it all up, seams disappear. So all of these seams that were shown before are all gone, but all everything that you're seeing on the ceiling right now, those are all nails, screws that we screwed the ceiling off to stop that from happening. But I had a lot, I mean, a lot of patching to do in here. Uh, this archway, of course, and, uh, and a lot of patching. But you know what? It's done, sanded, ready for prime. I did this a while ago. I, I, I truthfully, I can't believe they, they finished the floors. All of these floors are done and covered throughout before they primed and painted this, but hey, who am I? <laughs> As you can see, it's set up really well. It's just, you see a little bit of dark stuff right here in the middle. Other than that, that's almost dry, but it's not dry. Trust me, it's just set up. Now I can put my second coat on here. I'll put my second coat on real quick. And that's it. That's all I'm gonna do for now. And, and I'm, I'm gonna do a third coat only because I want this slicker and snot because of the light, all of the light that's coming in here. And besides, I, I see a little bit of, little waha actually, little thing in my eight. I'm gonna have to sand that out real quick. But, so let me, let me again, I'm gonna turn on this. I'm gonna turn that on again, my heat gun, and let this dry up, let this set up. This is Durban 5, I'll show you. Easy sand five, that's what it is. And it's supposed to get hard in five minutes. So give or take, it's gonna be quicker since I've got this going on there. And since that was warm when I did it. All right, I'll be right back. So here I am, I'm gonna put the final coat on here. You know, you can kind of see the outline of the patch here in the circular. Now, some people are like, oh, you gotta use these great big wide knives. Listen, I did this entire patch with an eight inch knife. I mean. I know it looks bigger than that, but this is only an eight inch knife. So now I'm gonna put my final coat and I'm gonna pull it very, very tight and go out just a little bit more than I did the first time or the second time. And then, but pull it very tight. And, uh, and then I'll let this set up a little bit more and I'll show you how I sand this. Cause I am gonna dust this off just a little bit. Now some people, they might just go ahead and do this coat right here and then take a spray bottle, spray it, and wipe off the edges. And that will work. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do this right here. It's nice and tight skin. And I, and I went and took the little Waha out of my eight with my, with my sanding pole, so it's ready. If you get a bad chip in your blade, if you get a chip in your six, eight, 10, 12, whatever it is, what I have, at home, I have some files, and I'll take it and I'll file it down. I'll just make sure it's filed down, because sometimes these corners end up actually even getting rounded on me, right? So I will file this down, and then I'll take some sandpaper and clean off the edges and make sure it's nice and clean. But I didn't have to file this. The nick wasn't that bad. I was able to take it out with some sandpaper. So I'll get right back to you. I'm gonna turn this back on dry it out, and I'll show you how I sand it. It's all pretty much set up. Uh, it's all pretty much dry. I mean, here it is. I'm, I'm just doing this patch in one shot. Um, I don't know how long I've been here, but I had some other things I had to do in here anyway. But I didn't want to have to come back tomorrow. So I taped it, topped it, skimmed it, sanded it. I'm gonna sand it right now. So a lot of people think you just have to sand over the entire surface. Not if you've made it nice and slick, you don't. But you should, 
hit these edges. Now, the reason I, I have this mask on is at my old age, I get sinus infections really easy. There was a time where I never wore a mask ever. I was sanding, I was sanding a lot and, and it didn't have any effect on me. But now in my old age, I get sinus infections very, very quickly if I get a little bit of dust in my nose. So shame on me for, for doing what I did when I was a kid. Guys, wear a good mask. This is a, this is a good mask. So it's a 3M K, uh, N95. So all I really have to do is hit my edge. That's all I have to do. I have to hit the edges and make sure I don't have any. And it's hard to see because I tell you, it's so slick right now. I do have, what happened was I had a little scratch right here and I had some topping. I didn't want to mix up any more, I didn't want to mix up any more uh, uh, five. So I just hit this with really tight with some topping. So that looks good. We're done, guys. That's it. It's ready to paint. I mean, it is ready to, to prime, prime, prime. Don't paint. It's ready to prime. So, and you guys have a great day. Hey, if you really like my videos, subscribe. And if you really, really like them, please just share them with somebody else. How do you like my new t-shirts? And you know, you also might want to check out these other videos that are playing right down here right now. So uh, just click on them. All right, subscribe. Have a great day.